Richard Alexander Murdoch Jr. M U R D A U G H. I go by Buster. Mr. Murdoch is is your father sitting over here at defense table? Yes, sir. Um, tell the jury uh, a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? Where you raised? Where'd you go to school? Right. Um, so my name is Buster, 26 years old. I live in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. I, I was born in Savannah and lived in Beaufort for about two years when I was a little child. We moved to Hampton in about 2000 and I grew up in Hampton, went to Wade Hampton High School. And after high school, I went to a small college in Spartanburg called Walford. Did uh, is your mother Maggie? Yes, sir. And your brother Paul? Yes, sir. The uh, when you moved to Hampton, uh, do you, do you remember how old you were when you first moved to Hampton? Uh, three, three or four. Okay. And did you and did you live in Hampton, um, in a house with in the city limits? Yes, sir. The town limits. Yes, sir. And you did that for, with your mom and dad and brother for how long? For, yeah, around 20 years. Right. The, uh, and you, what schools did you go to coming up through uh, in Hampton County? Would you go to grade school? Went to Ben Hazel Primary School, Hampton Elementary, Elementary School, North District Middle School, Wade Hampton High School. Okay. And as you were um, growing up, what, what were your interests, Buster? Um, sports, playing sports, doing things outdoors, hunting, fishing. And, and was your father involved in those interests with you? Yes, sir. And was your mother also? Yes, yes sir. And, and in, in what way? Well, my father coached every little league team I played on up until I started playing for the schools in which had a coach. And what, what about Paul? What, what were his interests growing up? Paul's interests were outdoors, mostly. Um, hunting, fishing, playing around in the woods. Right. Did, did he also play sports at times? He did. Yeah, he played basketball and baseball. Did your dad coach him as well? He did. And would your parents attend all of your and Paul's sporting events as you were growing? Every game. And it was a rarity for them to miss one. And then if they had to, they would call and explain. And right. And um, at some point in time, did your parents buy this property off Moselle Road? Yes, sir. Do you remember roughly when that was? Right around 2012. I think I would have been a sophomore in high school. And, and when that property was first purchased, uh, did you move out to Moselle or are you still living in Hampton? So we had a house in Hampton and also purchased the property at Moselle, which had a house. And for the beginning stages of owning Moselle, Hampton was still working as our primary residence. But I believe it was Hurricane Matthew, or one of the hurricanes came through and blew a bunch of uh, pine trees over on the house. So it had to get work done to it. And from that point, we moved out from Hampton to Moselle while the house was getting fixed. And more or less, it, it just kind of, it never transitioned back to Hampton. It just almost like Moselle became the primary residence. And during this time, did your family also have a house at Edisto? Yes, sir. Uh, how frequently would you stay at the house of Dutta Very frequently during the summertime, okay. almost every weekend. And when your family essentially relocated uh, to Mo the Moselle property and making it primary residence, were you still living at home in high school or remember how old you were at that point in time? Yeah, I'm sorry, Jim, will you say that w again? W were you living at home at that point in time? Is that while you were still in high school or yes. school? Do you, you remember when? The when you transitioned to Moselle and started staying there basically full-time during the school year? Um, 
So when I was still in high school, we were living in the Hampton house, and then I'd gone off to college, okay. which is when this stuff happened, and, and they moved out to Moselle. So I was living in at college. And when did you go off to college? 2014. Okay, so sometime after t around 2014, family relocated to Moselle for the most part That's because right. of the hurricane damage. Yes, that? sir. Okay. Tell the jury uh, a little bit about the Moselle property. I know they've heard a fair amount, but I think you probably know it better than anybody. Yeah, so the Moselle property is, it's roughly seven, roughly 1,700 acres. And a lot of that is really not even accessible. It's a lot of swamp lands, a lot of stuff that you just, you know, no road systems or anything like that. But a, a big portion of it is, is you know has road systems and everything and it's it's a big property it's broken up into several different parcels that border each other and you know we have 20 20 some odd deer stands dove fields duck ponds just all over the property so what what type of hunting um did you and your brother and your father do at moselle everything deer duck quail dove Hogs. You have, you have a duck pond? We have a duck, we have a duck pond. Okay. And and the, the hunting was, did you have a lot of um, friends come out and hunt as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now the jury has seen a uh, aerial view of the property, and there's a main house, there's shed, kennels, and then, then there's a house sort of right on Moselle Road. What, what's, what do you call that house? That's the cabin. The cabin. And, and did, did you live in the cabin with friends over summers at some point in time? I did. The summer of my sophomore year, after my sophomore year, me and two of my buddies lived in the cabin. Okay. And who are those buddies? Uh, Nolan Tootin and Rogan Gibson. Okay. And the, um, so we've, um, we can get more of this. We've heard about hogs and pigs on the property. Can you tell the jury a little bit about that? About the hogs? Yes, sir. We had a lot of hogs, and if you don't know, hogs are very destructive to a piece of property. You know, we plant food plots for the deer, plant the fields for the doves and the ducks, and they basically go through and, and ruin it all. So given the high population of hogs, we you know, would frequently go out and, and hunt them, try to okay. try to did, cut the numbers down a little bit. Did, um, what kind of guns did you have there at Moselle? We had a lot of guns. Did you have shotguns? We did, shotguns. You have 12 gauge shotgun? 12 gauge shotguns, 20 gauge shotguns, 16 gauge shotguns, 28 gauge shotguns. Right, and how many rifles? type rifles did you have on the property? A lot. Can you just name some of them? Yeah, 270, 270 short mag, 7 millimeter 08, 308, 243, 223, 300 blackout. And what type of ammo did you keep on the property? Well, I mean, all ammos for those, for those calibers. Sure. And where were the guns kept primarily? In the gun room at the main house at Moselle. And was there a pool table in the gun room? There was. Okay. Were there times when guns were left elsewhere on the property? Yes. Where else on the property would guns be left? Well, just, just myself. I mean, I've, I've left them up at the shed before. I've left them on golf cart used that day, left them in a truck. I mean, guns would just not always find their way back to the gun room. How about... Um, how about Paul? How was he with uh, securing guns? Not, not good. What do you mean by that? He would, Paul, Paul left guns probably more on the property than anybody else. And just, and sometimes if he, like sometimes he would use my gun and then he would leave it and then I'd have to track it down. Right. Did um, Paul carry guns in his truck? He did. Uh, would he keep his truck locked up? No, no, not all the time. Okay. 
Did at some point in time you and, and Paul receive 300 blackouts for Christmas? Yes, sir. Do you remember roughly, was that 2016 or 2017? Sounds right. Okay. And, um, and what color was your 300 blackout? It was black. And have you been sitting in this courtroom during the entire trial? Yes, sir. And the, the jury's seen a black 300 blackout. Is that yours? It is. That is my 300 blackout. Was that the one you got for Christmas? Yes, sir. And what color was Paul's? Paul's was black and tan. And when you say black and tan, what part was tan and what part was black? So I, so the receiver would have been tan, and the, I think, and barrel would have been tan. What part would have been black? Stock, maybe. Okay. And so it, yours was all black, his was black and tan. That's right. Um, what happened to his that he got for Christmas in 2016? Or um, his gun was apparently stolen, lost, taken. Um, yeah. Do you, uh, how do you know that? That's just what Paul told me. Did what happened to your gun after Paul's was stolen? My gun became, you know, what we would both use. And would um, what did that create some confrontation between you two at times? Yes, sir. And and what? Why? Well, kind of like I just touched on. So he would use it. He's not very good about putting it back where he found it. I leave it somewhere, I go back and, you know, want to get it, and it's not there. Did, um, did, did you uh, notice, were you aware that Paul got a replacement at some point in time? No, sir. Well, you heard about that in the courtroom? Yes, sir. Trial. Okay. But up to that point, you, did you ever see Paul use the replacement? No, sir. I've never seen a replacement. So every time in your presence, Paul was using a 300 blackout, which one would it be? Mine. There's, uh, I'm not going to pull these guns out, Buster, but there's uh, been dis discussion and the jury has seen a 12-gauge Benelli with a Mojo uh, sticker on it. Whose gun is that? That's mine. And what's Mojo? Mojo is a brand of uh, decoy. It's... Basically what it is, is it's, you know, say you buy a wood duck mojo and it sits on a pole, but the wings are motorized. So it, it's to repl replicate, you know, a, a more alive duck. And, and did you, why does your Benelli have a mojo sticker on it? Because I bought a mojo decoy and in the box it came with a sticker and I put the sticker on the gun barrel. And so that way you know that's your gun. That's right. Okay. Um, I believe the evidence in the case is that that Mojo Benelli, when it was seized, was, was loaded. Did you, did you frequently put the gun away loaded? Yes, sir. Why? I, you know, knowing that I might need it again at any point. Okay. Just, you know, put it back on the shelf. I kept the safety on. Okay. Um, and, and I think it was loaded with a three inch and a three and a half inch turkey load. Do you remember that you would load that gun with a three inch and a three and a half inch? Yes, sir. And why would you do that? Um, I do that because when I go turkey hunting, it, the goal is to you know, get the turkey close to you and shoot it in the first try. But if I were to miss and the turkey goes running away and I try to shoot it again, I put a bigger shell, larger shell behind the smaller one for that purpose. Okay. And that's something you commonly did? Yes, sir. Did, did you ever load in a 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 28 gauge, a buckshot followed by a bird shot? No, sir, I've never done that. Have you ever known anybody to do that? No, sir. Do you know of any reason to do that? No, I can't think of any reason to do that. Okay. And specifically, have you ever loaded in any gun a buckshot Followed by dry lock, steel, waterfowl, waterfowl pellet. I have not. You know anybody to do that? No, sir. You know any reason to do that? No, sir. Okay. And you ever seen any guns on your property loaded in that fashion? No, sir. Buckshot with some sort of bird shot right behind it? No, sir. The jury's heard uh, testimony about 
goings and comings, which way you go in and go out at Moselle. How many entrances were there at Moselle? Two entrances. And will you describe the two entrances? So the main entrance is pretty much straight out of the front door of the house. Um, you would go down a dirt road and then you would come up on uh, big brick columns and that's what I refer to as the main entrance. But down by the kennels is another entrance and that one is a little bit different. That one has the mailbox um, beside it and those are, those are the two entrances. Okay. So let's talk about coming on to the property. Which, um, which, which entrance coming on to the property would your mother normally take? I, I would say normally everybody took the main entrance in, unless that there was a reason that you needed to go down the other one, which for her, her, her reasons of going down the other one would be the mailbox and also when we got packages delivered from Amazon, they actually would be or would go to the shed as opposed to the, to the house. So your deliveries would go not not to the yellow or whatever white house that you white. lived in, but down at the ship. That's right. Okay. Now, leaving Moselle, the property, uh, which way would you, Alex, your mom, Paul, normally go leaving Moselle? Out of the main gate. And if you're going to Almeda, which, which way do you turn coming out of the main gate? To the right. Okay. The, um, and in 2020, 2021, um, during the summer months, where did your mother prefer to stay? At Edistow. And where were you staying, say, in the spring, summer of 2021? Where were you living? Um, sp spring, uh, Moselle. And then uh, summer? Where'd you move to? Or um, I was down at Edison a lot in the summer. Okay. And then, um, and where was Paul living in the, say, spring of 2021? Um, Is he saying spring of 20 or 21? 21. Now, did you, maybe I said the wrong thing. In the spring of 2021, where were you living? Spring of 2021. Uh, do you have an apartment in Columbia? Yes, yes, I did have an apartment you in Columbia. Split time between Columbia and Moselle, and yes, sir. And you have a girlfriend? Yes, sir. Okay. And then in the summer of 2021, well, in in June, uh, where were you living? Um, between Columbia and between Rock Hill. Okay. And who lived in Rock Hill? Uh, my girlfriend's mom. Okay. And then in the sp spring up through June of 2021, where was Paul living? In Columbia. He had an apartment in Columbia? Yes, sir. And, and was, he at, was he enrolled at University of South Carolina in the spring of 2021? Yes, sir. Okay, and then once school got out, do you know where Paul relocated to? Um, anywhere? No, not exactly. I know that... I mean, I think he went down to live with John Marvin. He was working for him for the summertime. And who's John Marvin? My uncle. And what kind of business does John Marvin have? He has a rental business, and he sells Kubota tractors. And, and where does he have um, uh, store locations? Uh, one in Okatee, one in Hampton. And was Paul working at the Okatee location? Yes. Okay. Um, just sort of backing up did did you and your dad and mother and brother Paul do a, a lot of things with 
your mother's family, the the Branstetters. Yes, sir. Um, what type of things would y'all do? <clears throat> well, we'd gather every every holiday, and you know, other than that, we would do trips together. We would go down to Key West, go over to um, my aunt Mary and Uncle Bart's lake house, river house, just right. stuff like that. Take trips, family trips. And and I'm I'm just gonna pull up on the screen, Doug, uh, Defendant's Exhibit 122, which is in the evidence, Your Honor. Um, and Buster, take a look on the screen, and and I believe your Aunt Marion testified about this. Can you tell the jury what this photo is? This is a photo of me and my brother, and my mom, and my dad. And and was this taken in uh, I think May 21? That you were up at, for a baby shower, is that right? Yes, sir. And where where was this? So this is in um, this is at Lake Kiwi in a community called the Reserve. Okay. And and y'all are visiting with whom? Uh, with my aunt and uncle, Aunt Mary and Uncle Bart. And for what purpose? Uh, for my oldest cousin's baby shower. All right. And um, and was events like this unusual or no, sir. frequent? Or common. And was your your father close with Maggie's dad? Your grandfather, Papa T, as it's been heard in this, has been known in this courtroom. Yes, sir. He was. And what kind of things would they do together? They would do a lot together. Um, for a long time, there was a my grandfather had a um, camping trip, and Papa T frequented the camping trip. He liked that. Dad and Papa T would go to Carolina sporting events together, play golf together. And did did you spend a lot of time with your dad and and your grandfather Papa T? Yes, sir. You play golf with him? Yes, sir. We'll get to that a little bit. Um, and let's talk about uh, your dad's side of the family. Was it a close knit knit family? Yes, sir. Um, and and your grandfather, your dad's father, his name was what? Handsome. Handsome. Um, and that was a nickname, I take it? Yes, sir. It's what grandchildren called him. Everybody. Well, it started as grandchildren calling him, and then all of our friends started calling him that. But that, that was Randolph Murdoch? Yes, sir. And then uh, your grandmother's name, Libby? Yes, sir. And they live close by, is that correct? That's right. Where do they live? Almeda. And in relation to, I guess, Hampton, where, where's Almeda? So straight down 278, like you're going to Yemisee. Okay, and how far away is it from, say, the law office of uh, PMPED to mm -hmm. your grandparents' house? Right. How, roughly how far is that? Ten minutes. Okay. And how far of a drive was it, would it have been from your t house in Hampton? I mean, roughly the same. Right. And you know roughly how far of a drive would it have been from the house in Moselle? Probably more like 20. And, the, uh, and and did did you and your mom and, and your dad and your brother Paul spend a lot of time with uh, the Murdoch side of the family? Yes, sir. And and what would y'all do together? Um, similar stuff, obviously gathering during the holidays, various things like that. We would take trips with that side of the family as well. You know, get out everybody, rent a big house. You know, meet up on the water on the weekends just just right. a lot of stuff going on with that side of the family as well and so um i guess let's go back and well let's identify on your dad's side of the family do your dad have brothers and sisters yes sir who are they john marvin uh randy and lynn okay and then john marvin randy and lynn had children did they yes sir so he had a lot of cousins yes sir and the, Families would get together, those cousins and aunts and uncles. That's right. Okay. And was there property down on Chichesse that, that y'all would spend time at? Yes, sir. That was the family river house, Chichesse. And where is that located? So it's located in Okatee, um, Waters Avenue, off the Chichesse River. Right. It's, it's pretty pretty desolate. The um, And the... Spring in May and June of 2021. What was your grandfather Handsome's 
health condition as you knew it? Um, not, not good. It wasn't in good health. What did you understand his health problems to be? Um, I understand he had cancer, and I understood that, you know, he was having a pretty big battle with it. And what was your grandmother? What did you call your grandmother? M. M. Yes, sir. What, what health issues did she have in May and June of 2021? She has Alzheimer's. Okay. And would, um, would your dad frequently check on Handsome and M? Yes, sir. Would you go with your dad to check on Handsome and M? I would occasionally go with them too, yes, sir. Okay. And what times of day would you go with your dad to check on your grandparents? It, it could have been any time. Um, went over at lunch a lot of times. Um, went over in the evenings a lot. Just no real set schedule, just kind of kind of mosey on over there. When um, would, would your mother go with your dad? She would. Not... Not regularly, but she she went. Would 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 Paul stop in and check on your yeah, grandparents? Yeah, yes, sir. Was that fairly regularly for something Paul to do? To yeah, Paul would do it regularly as well. Um, when you would go with your dad in the evenings, um, um, and maybe it's not limited to the evenings. What, where would you park when you go visit your grandparents? Um, for the most part, um, just like an ordinary afternoon visit, park in you know, the, the garage, the um, carport. But if we went over a little bit later, then we would pull around to the back side of the house and be able to enter through the, the back door. Okay. And what, what's at the back side of the house? So when you walk in the back side, it's, it's like a, it, we call it a sunroom, but it's you know, a, a dining table. It's got a TV in there. And then that is right next to the kitchen and then if you're in the kitchen and you go to the right then that's where my um, grandparents room is okay Doug if you could pull up page 38 from states exhibit 524 please that's in evidence Twenty-four, I believe it is page 38 Yes. And that's page 38. So Buster, uh, this is from State's Exhibit 524, which is in evidence, which is the, the uh, GPS data off the OnStar provided from General Motors. And can you see that? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us, uh, what's, what's that house? So that's my grandparents' house at Almeida. All right. And these um, these dots in the back, and, and I'm going to point to to uh, this line of dots just right next to the circle that, that Doug drew. Do you, do you see them? Where the, they seem to be connected right right here on the the far right. Yes, sir. Where is that on, on the property? <clears throat> so that's right off the back corner of the house. Is that a place where you'd normally park to go in the back of the house? Yes, sir. That is where. Have you parked there yourself? I have. Have you seen other family members park there? I have. Is that, is that a customary place to park when you go in the back door where the kitchen sunroom is? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you some photos, which are exhibits. One thirty to one thirty six. And I'm going to ask you if you can just identify them. Don't show them to the jury, but just tell us what those photographs are of. Uh, So these photos are of the area we're talking about off the back corner of the house at Almeida. All right. Your Honor, this time I move defendants exhibits 130 through 136 in evidence. No objection. 
Thank you. So, Doug, please pull up Exhibit 133. And Buster, tell us what 133 is, please. Yeah, so this is the back door entrance to where I was just talking about to enter into the sunroom kitchen into the kind of back quarters where my grandparents' bedrooms were. All right, and if you'll pull up 134, Doug, please. And what's 134? Same, same thing, same back side of the property, just a little bit of a different angle. So the... The part of the house to the right of the photo, what's that? Can, can, so, you, can you see here? Yeah, so that right there would be my grandparents' bedroom. Okay, so that's, that's in the evening, your grandparents would be in that part of the house, is that correct? Yes, sir. And if you went to the um, garage entrance, what, what, would, what would happen? What, what would be required of your grandparents or some sitter to let you in? Yeah, so you, you, you could go and knock, but a lot of times they're in the back part of the house and they don't hear you, so you normally call and say, like, hey, I'm, I'm at the front. I need to be, you know, let in. And they'd have to walk from the back to the front, unlock the door, and let you in. But if you're in the back, how, how far is the walk? A um, quarter of the distance it would be to walk okay. to the – it's very short. And was it common to go in the back door? Yes, sir. And is it? And and then I'm going to show you Exhibit 131. Please pull that up, Doug. So, Yana, can, can he step down off the stand and point to the jury where? So Buster, step aside so that the jury can, you're not blocking their view. I don't have a pointer, but can, can you point out in, the, in this photo where you would normally park? Um, all right, yeah, point out to the jury where you no, normally park to go into the... Um, so you would park, you know, right about here, coming right off the, basically the corner of the house, and this is the same same stairway to go up to the back door. So you'd park in the grass? Yes, sir. And, and near that um, satellite dish? Or not near the satellite dish? Yeah, Objection. Any... Where would you park Leading. in relation to the satellite dish? Yeah, right there close to it. Okay. All right. And that was... Now, oh, hang on, Buster. I'm sorry. Come back. What, what's this structure right here? <clears throat> that's, um, that's what we call the cook shed. And maybe there's, and what's in the cook shed? Uh, a couple couches, big TVs. That's mostly where my grandfather used to have a cookout on every third oh. Thursday of a month, and that's where he would have his little gathering. It's just a, just an open, open concept in there with a kitchen, TV, a couple couches. All right. Hang on, Doug. Pull up 132. Well. Plus, we're still standing here. Plus, what's this uh, structure to the right of the, as you're looking at the cookhouse? That's it's old shed. Okay. Now, roughly, what's the distance between the cookhouse and the cook shed to where you'd normally park to go in the back? door you know 10 20 yards maybe okay all right go ahead and take your seat please How often would you speak with your mom and dad on the
telephone on a daily basis? Pretty much every day. Right. And um, and would um, would would you be with your dad when he's talking to your mother? Yes, sir. Um, I guess. I guess how, can you give the jury some sense of how frequently, as a family, y'all y'all would engage in telephone conversations daily? Yeah, it was very frequent. I mean, I, I spoke to my mom every day, m multiple times a day, and the like for my dad and and for my brother too. And then, and that's just me. And I know it's like they're all talking to each other too. Just a lot of a lot of conversating throughout the day over the telephones within the family. Okay. So, Doug, I'm going to pull up State's Exhibit 520, which in, is in evidence, and this is the Rudowski um, extended or extensive timeline, not the condensed version. State's 520, and if you'll go to page 14, please. So, Buster, what I'd like to do, and this this starts at just at 1, 11, 10 p.m. If you could blow up that first entry, Doug, the, uh, and this is in evidence, offered by the state. And, and I just want to go through some of these again. So, at, at 1, 10, it, this document says, Paul Murdoch misses a phone call from Margaret Murdoch. And then at 1, 11, 36, it says, Maggie makes an outgoing Phone call to Buster. Answered one minute and 22 seconds long. Um, do you have any independent recollection of this particular phone call? No, sir. Okay. But but if you keep working your way down, um, at 119, Doug, there's another entry. It says, Paul Murdoch makes an outgoing phone call to Mom. Do you see that? At 119. Yes, sir. And, and, and then if we'll go down to... Well, so I, I guess let's just stop there. Is it frequent that your mother would reach out to you and, and Paul during the day? Yes, sir. Okay. And if, if you'll go down to 141, please, Doug, at 141, 33 seconds. And you see uh, Maggie makes an outgoing phone call to Buster. Do you see that? At 142, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And then right before that, at 141, it looks like Maggie makes an outgoing Phone call to Alex, not answered. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And then if you go right below that, it says 142.43, Maggie makes an outgoing phone call to Paul. Now, you see that? Yes, sir. Well, anything unusual going on this day, or is this sort of how life was in the Murdoch family? No, this, this, was, this was normal. This was the way we communicated. Okay. And then if you'll go... To page 15, Doug at the bottom at entry 1 minute 50, 1, 1, 1 52, 39 p.m. says Maggie Murdoch makes outgoing phone call to Buster answered at 119. So there's, here's another call from your mother, is that right? Yes, sir. Not unusual, was it? Not unusual. All right, then page 16 um, at 155. 40, if you'll take a look, blow that up, Doug. It says, Maggie Murdoch received an incoming phone call from PA Alec Murdoch. Answered six minutes and 18 seconds. And that was your dad and mom apparently talking, correct? Yes, sir. And then right below that at 156, 18, there's some instant messages to you about some medication. Do, do you remember what this might be about? Yeah, so this was about, I, um, I take a medication called Dupixent, which is a self-given shot. And I was up in Rock Hill, and I needed to get the medicine delivered to this address here on the screen. Okay. And that's what we were talking about. She was, you know, calling the pharmacy to get it redirected to that address. Normal day, is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Doug, if you go to page 19 at 324. 20 p.m. Excuse me, I'm sorry. 324.35. Alex Murdoch receives an incoming phone call from Buster. 
518 seconds. Do you, sitting here today, do you remember what the phone call was about? Uh, no, sir. I don't know specifically what it's about. But just normal yeah, just day in the life of Buster Murdoch. That's right. Talking to his parents. Yes, sir. If you go to page 24, Doug, at 4.42.56 p.m., See, that looks like at 4.42, your mother's calling you again, right? Yes, sir. Anything unusual going on? No, sir. And then if you'll go to page 26, Doug, at 5.16.25 p.m., and there's an entry that says, Alec Murdoch calls Buster Murdoch. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Looks like a six-second call. Do you remember what that might be about? Um, no, six seconds could be a, a butt dial. That, that would happen often. All right, and then um, if you go down the bottom of the page at 521.11, looks like there's a 92-second call, which is about five minutes after what might have been the butt dial. It says Alex Murdoch receives a call, Buster, answered 92 seconds long. You see that? Yes, sir. So are you returning your dad's call, you think? Probably. Okay. And I'll just carry through. If we'll, um, Doug, if you'll, if you'll go to page. 32 at 6 52 13 p.m. please pull it up thank you so this uh, this entry says Alec Murdoch calls Terry Brandstetter 412 seconds uh, who's Terry Brandstetter Papa T. And would your dad call your grandfather fairly regularly? Yes, sir, he would. So again, anything unusual going on on the 7th for y'all to have all these communications? No, sir. And then we'll jump to Uh, page 49, Doug. And if you go to 908.58, and it says, Alec Murdoch, I messages Maggie Murdoch stating, quote, going to check on M, be right back, close quote. Now, who's M? Uh, my grandma. And this is at 908.58. And then at 910.47, there's an entry that says, Alec Murdoch calls Buster. And it says 60 seconds long. Um, and, and that's at 910.47 p.m. on June 7th. Do you remember getting that phone call? Yes, sir. What did you talk about? Objection. What did you talk about? Basis for the objection. Reacting to hearsay. Pardon? I don't open the door to anything else. I was reacting to hearsay. I asked what the topic was, Your Honor. Objections overruled. Um, yeah, don't say what your dad said. Just tell me what y'all talked about. Yeah, well, we just talked about, like, hey, how you doing? And then okay. he said that he was going out to. Well, hang, hang on. Well, I don't think you Okay. I mean, I thought he didn't want to hear hearsay, but I'm sorry, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, and he was just letting me know that he was going out to Alameda to check on them. Okay. And was this a unusual conversation you had with him? No, sir. What was his demeanor in the conversation? 
normal? Had, had it changed from any of the other times you talked to him earlier in the day on the 7th? No, sir. And would he on occasion call you when he was going to check on his mother, M? He would, yes, sir. Was that an unusual occurrence? No, probably one of the more regular occurrences. We, have, we, we all usually would make phone calls like riding in a car. Okay. So when he was riding over, it's very common for him to call. You take that down, Doug. So just um, going through this extraction from, say, 1 o'clock until what we just talked about, 9 o'clock, we did well, either multiple phone calls within the family. Um, tell the jury about the cell phone coverage at Moselle. Um, not, not great cell phone coverage. Didn't have a lot of service, especially around. So if you were underneath the shed, at the shed, it had a metal roof. It just couldn't get any service inside of it. It was spotty around the whole property, and it had honestly gotten bad up at the house. We had just put on a new roof. Roof was metal, and just kind of hindered a lot of the phone coverage out there. Would it be unusual for your dad to leave his phone at the house when he was going down to the shed? No, sir. Would Can't leave the witness. No, sir. Would not be unusual. Okay. Well, did, did your dad always have his phone with him when he was on the property at Moselle? Not all the time. Um, did your brother always have the phone on him when he was at the property at Moselle? Not always on him. He, he would have it near him, but, you know, he's out there working on stuff and didn't always have his phone just in his hand or in his pockets or anything like that. Did your father ever like, misplace his phone? Yes, sir. Was that a frequent occurrence? It was. How about your brother? Was that, did he ever misplace his phone? He did. Was that frequent? It was. Now, there's been some testimony about Bubba. Yes, sir. Who's Bubba? Bubba was our dog. What kind of dog was Bubba? He's a yellow lab. And um, was he difficult to control? Um, he could be, but for the most part, no. Um, he would listen. He would listen to Dad more than anybody else. But also, we um, we had a had a gun dog shot collar that we would put on him sometimes. And when he had that on, he was. Okay. On his P's and Q's. The um, switching gears on another topic. Uh, when your dad, well, let me just put it like this: How frequently would your dad take a shower or a bath? He could take them. He could take them a lot. And he, you know, working out there, if he goes outside and sweats a lot. Comes back in and takes a shower. Was that normal routine for him? It was. And did um, did he sweat a lot? Yeah, it's it's hot out there in the summertime. Was he a lot bigger then than he is today? He was. How big was he? Probably two, you know, six four, two fifty, two sixty. Right. Alan, excuse me, Buster, were you aware that your dad had an um, opioid addiction? Uh, a little bit. I knew a little bit about the usage of pills. What did you know about it? I knew that, I knew that either my brother and mom had found them at some point and then, you know, told them, like, hey, we found these. And he... I want to say the 2018 around Christmas, he went to a, a detox facility after Christmas, and that was my knowledge of it. Thought that that handled it, and then there were a couple more times after after the fact where they would kind of go into this finding pills, all that stuff, and then he he did a few he did a few kind of like at home just 
self detoxed a couple times and you know thought you know once he did that that you know get off of him but that that was kind of my general knowledge about it all you you thought he he had beat it that's right yes sir and when he was confronted with about his pills what was his attitude i i, I don't know for sure, because I wasn't there when a lot of the confrontations happened with, with them finding the pills, but I mean, I've never heard anything just, you know, apologetic and, right. you know, sorry and would, would usually be his kind of regular, you know, kind of response. How, how did your family handle disputes, like disagreements? Um, Pretty, I mean, you know, like adults, pretty civilly, you know, you know, talked about it and stuff like that. I mean, and it just depends on the dispute, too. Like, right. you know, like I, I was a kid, you know, I get spanked, stuff like that. Once it's not really a disagreement. That's just a, what you're a teenager and college age, right? Any reprimand or disputes you, you've gotten into with your father? Was it all civil? Yeah, definitely civil. Um, did your father show patience with you and your brother? Yes, sir. He would. Was there ever any violence in the family? No, sir. In February of 2019, your brother was in a boating accident. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, and I, I believe, where were you living at the time? Columbia. Okay. And and uh, was he criminally charged eventually? Yes, sir. And what, and what type of uh, reaction was there to his involvement in the boating accident and his criminal charges sort of in the community in Hampton? I would say a negative reaction in the community. The, the media spike kind of got kind of got going after it. There was a lot of a lot of articles in the media about you know our family and and stuff like that. And uh, to your knowledge, was Paul? being threatened or bullied on social media or anything like that? Yeah, he was definitely being bullied in or on social media. Um, you know, just people sending random messages and I would talk to him. I know a lot of times he'd be walking down the sidewalk and, you know, a car comes by and, and they would yell some stuff at him. I knew he would go out, you know, in a bar and, you know, there's somebody that wants to talk about it and, you know, make a scuff about it and whatnot. Right. The, um, what was, um, what was your mother's reaction to all the negativity of surrounding the boating accident? It, um, you know, it kind of consumed her. She's, she's big on, on reading all of it. And when she read the negative stuff, it, you know, made her feel upset and whatnot. And it, it ultimately, it ultimately kind of caused her to distance herself from Hampton. Um, at this time, you know, primarily living at Moselle, she quit going to the, to the grocery stores in Hampton, quit going to the pharmacy, quit going to get food in Hampton, just thought that there was a, a real, you know, kind of a bad, kind of a bad vibe in Hampton, like you go, she right. felt like people were staring at her and talking about her and stuff. Where, where would she do her shop? She moved over to Walterboro and started going over that way. Right. Were, uh, were you sued in the boating accident? Yes, sir. Um, in response. With regard to relevance, Your Honor, it's Civil litigation about the boating accident has been a big part of the state's case. He's a party to litigation. Uh, overruled the objection. Were, were you sued? Yes, sir. Um, was your dad sued? He was. Was your mother sued? Uh, she, her estate became sued. But before she w was murdered, had she been sued? I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. Okay. Maybe. And do you, know, do you know if Paul had been sued? No, I don't know that he had been sued. Okay. Well, 
was your mother anxious about the civil lawsuit? Yes, sir. Um, what was her biggest concern? Um, her, I would say her biggest concern was reading articles after, you know, Mark Tinsley had made a statement about how much money he was wanting to collect in the civil lawsuits, and I think it was to the tune of like forty million dollars or something like that. He was trying to trying to get, and, and that that made her anxious. And uh, what what was your reaction to statements like that? Um, well, I mean, I, I knew what he was saying, but I mean, it's, it's not, to me, it just didn't seem, you know, I, I didn't think, well, I don't have $40 million, so. All right. And, and, and was your dad anxious about the, the lawsuit, to your knowledge? Mm, he didn't appear to be overly anxious about it. Okay. What took priority, the criminal case against Paul or the civil case? Uh, the criminal case. Right. And with, uh, did the family support Paul in the criminal matter? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what do you mean by that? I mean that supported him in his criminal case because, you know, amongst the family, none, none of us thought that he was driving the boat. We thought at, he'd been at the time of the, the accident. That's correct. <coughs> Buster, I want to now talk uh, about the weekends leading up to June the seventh. Yes, sir. And um, and and we showed the picture of the lake weekend that where you were, um, went up to Kiwi with the Proctors and the Branstetters? Yes, sir. And and then the following weekend, I believe, was Memorial Day. Were you with your family on Memorial Day weekend? Yes, sir. And who, who was present? Uh, a lot of people were present. I was there, my brother was there, my mom, my dad. Um, my brother had some friends staying with us, and those were the people sleeping there, and then people are you know in and out throughout the day, throughout the weekend. I mean, was it a fun family weekend? Yes, sir. Okay. It was a normal Memorial Day weekend at Edisto with your family and friends? That's right. Okay. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 123. And I want to get you to identify that, Buster. Uh, don't just, just say what it is, please. Uh, it's a picture of my mom and my dad and I on a boat. Is that Memorial Day weekend? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we move Defendant's Exhibit 123 in the evidence. No objection. It's admitted. Is this the photo, Buster? Yes, sir. And then I, I believe this same weekend there was a, a birthday party or cookout. Is that right? Yes, sir. Um, Doug, if you could play exhibit, um, defense exhibit 61, please, it's in evidence. Don't just take a look at that. When's your dad's birthday? Do you know the exact date? Uh, it's not a test. You just say you don't know if you don't know. No, I don't, I don't know the exact date. It's around uh, Memorial Day? That's right. Okay. 27th, maybe. The, um, then the following weekend, there was a baseball tournament in Columbia, correct? Yep. Um, yes, sir. 
tell the jury about that weekend. What what happened there? That was the weekend. Um, South Carolina was hosting a regional baseball tournament, and me, my mom, my dad, and my girlfriend went to the to the baseball games. And where was the game? Columbia. And it was a super regional or regional. A regional. Yes, sir. And 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 what what days of that weekend did you go to the game? Saturday and Sunday. Did your mom and dad stay in Columbia that weekend? They did. Or they stayed on Saturday night? Yes, sir. Okay. And you, um, did y'all tailgate with them on Saturday or Sunday? Yes, sir. We did. Okay. And was it a normal weekend? It was. Fun weekend? Yes, sir. Um, and that Sunday would have been June the 6th, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, and then on June the 7th, we, we went through a host of um number of telephone calls with you and your dad and mom leading up to 908 910 on, on June 7th um, Buster when did you first find out that your mom and brother were murdered my um my dad called me I can't I can't remember the exact time, but it was later. Um, and he called me on the phone. He asked me if I was sitting down, and I was like, "Yeah." And then he, you know, sounded odd, and then he then he told me that that my mom and, and brother had been shot. What'd you do? Well, Brooklyn, my girlfriend was with me, and I, I think she heard the. Um, she could hear my conversation kind of over the phone. And so she just started packing packing stuff and I I kinda just sat there for a minute and I was I was in shock. But eventually we got our stuff together and, and um drove down to Moselle. Do you remember what time you got to Moselle? It it was it was early in the morning, late in the morning. Um you know, if if we left around 10, 30, 11, got, got there sometime probably around 2 o'clock in the morning. And when you got there, um, did you see your dad? Yes, sir. What kind of condition was he in? What was his demeanor? Yeah, his demeanor was, I mean, he was destroyed. He was heartbroken. I walked in the door and saw him and um, gave him a hug and just, just broken down. Could he speak? Not really. Was he crying? Yes, sir. Who else was in the house? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, my girlfriend, Brooklyn, and I got there. My Out in the driveway, my Uncle Randy and Uncle John were out there. Chris Wilson and, and Corey Fleming had just gotten there. They had pulled in behind us. And when I walked in, um, several of the partners were there. Ronnie Crosby was there. Lee Cope was there. Mark Ball was there. Um, Austin Crosby was there. William Barnes, uh, my buddy Nolan was there, and I'm sure I'm leaving some out, but that's sure. what I remember. And you, do you remember how long you stayed there? Stayed there several hours, probably, you know, probably three or four hours till about four or five o'clock in the morning. And, and where did you go? Um, and then we left Moselle and we went to Almeida. Oh. When you say we, who are you talking about? Uh, my girlfriend, my dad, and my Uncle John. I, I know this seems kind of trivial, um, but what was your dad wearing when you first saw him? Shorts, T-shirt. Okay. And um, did you help him pack? I, I did, yes, sir. What did you do to help him pack? Got his bag and went into the closet, grabbed some t-shirts, grabbed some shorts, grabbed a um, toilet kit, put it in the bag and, and left. Why were you doing the packing? Uh, just trying to help him. He, you know, he was so upset. We were all upset, but just trying to expedite the process of getting out of Alameda. When, when you went in to pack your, your dad, was there a t-shirt laying on the floor? I, I couldn't remember. Um, did you get 
shirts from above the um, I don't know. Where did you get the t-shirts from? Got them from the closet and there's like a wooden it's like wooden shelves up on the wall and I was getting the t-shirts from there. Were there a lot of t-shirts on the shelf? Yes sir. Do you know whether or not one of the t-shirts fell on the floor when you were packing? I don't know whether one of them fell on the floor or not but I mean certainly could have happened. When you um, got to Moselle, uh, were you able to get some sleep? No, sir. Did you um, go back to Moselle the next morning? Yes, sir. Um, and who went with you? Um, me, uh, my girlfriend, Brooklyn, and my dad. And maybe John Marvin, I don't know if he was riding with us or, or already out there separately, but he was somewhere in the mix. Do you remember roughly what time you got to Moselle? I mean, uh, I think we got there rather early. You know, nobody really slept, and, you know, about early in the morning, sun comes up. Just did, um, go back. Did, did you take a shower in Brooklyn, take a shower at Almeda, or did you do it over at Moselle? No, sir. We, um, we slept at, well, tried to sleep at Almeda, and then we took everything back with us to Moselle and, and we showered there. You know where your dad took a shower that morning? Ah, uh, yeah, Moselle. And when you went back over um, in the morning, do you know what your dad was wearing? When you were traveling from Almeda back? No, not specifically, but I know that, you know, I know what I packed, so it could have been any of that. It's just athletic shorts and T-shirts and stuff. Okay. And after um, you got to Moselle, and I guess just carrying the days forward, um, were you with your dad? Well, how often were you with your dad once you got back? to Moselle on, on the 8th? Yeah, every day. Um, for how many days? For a good while. Okay, so w let's talk about where you stayed on the 9th of the 8th. Do you remember? Night of the 8th would have either stayed back at Almeida or that's, that's potentially when we made the transition over to John Marvin's um, hunting lodge. Well, were you, um, would you say we, or are you including your father? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you drive together? Yes, sir. You did, was he pretty much in your eyesight for the first few days? Yes, sir. And so I, after um, the 8th, and then you come up on the 9th of Wednesday, uh, do you know whether you were at um, Mita or spending the night at at your Uncle John Marvin's place? Yeah, I think at that point we had switched over to his place over at Greenfield. Now, and you call it Greenfield, that's the name of the, his hunting? Um, yes, sir, just the name of the property overall. The property. Now, how far is it from, from Almeda? Uh, to Greenfield? Yeah. A couple minutes, I mean, not close very spot. Close yeah, spot. right down the road. And then, and and do you remember how long you stayed at at Greenfield with your dad? Yeah, I mean several days. And you know, I think anywhere from the ninth to the you know probably that rest of that week through that weekend. Yeah, on um, Thursday, June tenth, what happened? Um, the grandfather died. So the family was together and stayed together? Yes, sir. Do you ever remember your dad disappearing for any periods of time? No, sir. Were you close 
physically close to him most all the time. Yes, sir. Except when you were sleeping. That's right. And I believe the funeral for your mom and brother memorial service was on that Saturday. Yes, sir. Right. And then that Sunday was a funeral for your your father, grandfather. Grandfather. Sorry. Yes, sir. And um, at some point in time, you went to. At, did you go to Somerville at some point in time? Yes, sir. Uh, do you remember when you went to Somerville? Um. Right, right, you know, beginning of that next week. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, what I marked as Defendant's Exhibit 129 and um, ask you Yes, sir. You know, I'm not introducing 129, offering it to the witness to refresh his recollection. That's the step. All right. But it's for ID. Um, well, sir, I don't want you to publish that, but but I want you to. Hey, um, I, I want to ask you if that defendant's exhibit 129, marked for identification purposes, refreshes your recollection as to when you left to go to Somerville. Yes, sir. When, and well, tell the jury what what is that? What's that document you have in your hand? It's a it's a text thread between my girlfriend and I. And and does it have? So, based on that text communication between you and your girlfriend, it refreshes your recollection. When did you leave to go to Somerville? June fourteenth. Okay. And looking through there, refreshing your recollection. How long did you stay in Somerville? Stayed in Somerville until. Stayed in Somerville until the 17th. And then what do you remember doing after you left Somerville? Um, on the 17th, we left Somerville to go to Lake Kiwi. And so when you were in Somerville from the 14th to the 17th, who, who were you staying with? Staying with my grandparents. And then um, you went to Kiwi. Who did you go with? Kiwi. Went with my dad and I. My grandparents, my aunt and uncle, and, and their their children, their children's boyfriends, and that was it. Okay. So you're with your dad from the night of June seventh through the Kiwi trip. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you remember what you did after the Kiwi? Lake Kiwi trip. No. At some point in time, you decide, you know, I've got to go back to Rock Hill. Yeah. Yes, sir. Remember roughly when that was? No. I, I mean, I think it was sometime following all this, but I couldn't. I can't tell you exactly when I went back to work. Um, when you decided to go back to Rock Hill, you had a, you had a job in Charlotte. Is that right? Yes, sir. Um, did you have any discussions with your father about your personal safety? E yes, sir. Did, did he make any offers to you? He did. What offers did he make to you? He offered me to... Basis for the objection. Hearsay. Self-serving hearsay. Response. Your know, offer is not hearsay. It's an offer. The objection is sustained. Did um, did you take any security precautions? No. Did you want any security protection? No, sir, I didn't. Why not? Well, I I didn't I didn't want to carry a, a gun or anything like that, and I also didn't want. Uh, like a private security detail following me around 
just for lack of privacy. And and at the time, the, the places that I that I was staying in the places that I were going, um, like I was staying at Rock Hill in my girlfriend's house, who has, you know, alarm systems and security cameras and whatnot. And then other than that, I'm staying in hotels, which, right. you know, I just felt. Did at some point in time you and your father uh, announce our, a reward? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to show you one of Mark's defendants exhibit 126. I'm going to ask if you identify this. If you can identify this. Yeah, yes, sir. This is the reward. It's a news release up about the reward? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we've moved defendants exhibit 126 in evidence at this time. No objection. Submitted without objection. Can you pull it up, Doug? And if you could uh, just, just pull out the top two paragraphs, please, Doug. This can't be anywhere. It's not safe. Oh, it can't. Okay. Uh, did, did you work on this language with your dad? Yes, sir. Can, um, can you read to the jury the first two paragraphs, please, beginning with Alex and Buster Murdoch? Yes, sir. Alec and Buster Murdoch announced today a reward of 100000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons who brutally murdered Paul and Maggie on June 7, 2021. I want to thank everyone for the incredible love and support that we have received over the last few weeks. <clears throat> now is the time to bring justice for Maggie and Paul. Buster and I, along with Maggie's mother, father, and our entire family, ask that anyone with helpful information immediately call the SLED tip line or crime support. Sorry, crime stoppers. Thank you. Now there's a, um, in the body of this, there's a, expiration date on this reward. What's, what's your understanding of the purpose of having an expiration date? Um, I'm, I'm not real sure. Okay. Well, you see it says, to be eligible, the person claiming the reward must submit the tip to Sled or Crime Stoppers by September 31, 2021? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened in, in September, early September 2021, Buster? Um, talking about the... Yeah, do, do you remember your dad yes, went sir. off to detox, roadside shooting? Yes, sir. Um, from, from that moment that your dad went to the hospital and went to detox, did he ever come back home to his property, his clothes, his belongings, to no, your sir. knowledge? No, sir. There's been some questions about whereabouts, of, whereabouts are <clears throat> Alex's clothes. Can you tell the jury before he went off to detox where his clothes were? How many different locations he had clothes? Um, so... Had clothes at Moselle, had clothes at Greenfield, had clothes at probably a few clothes at Almeda, had clothes at Randy and Christie's house, had had clothes a lot of yeah. places. You have clothes down at Chichesi or? Yep, yep, Chichesi, Okatee. You have clothes at Edisto? Yes, sir. You have clothes in his car? Yes, sir. Can't leave the witness. How many nights after? June 7th, to your knowledge, did your dad spend at Moselle? None. How many nights after June 7th did you spend at Moselle? None. I'm going to, um, 
Now, do you have the Snapchat video? Can you pull that up, please? Of, of the tree. Your Honor, this is the Snapchat video that's in evidence. I'll get the exhibit number for the record shortly. But. Buster, you recognize that shirt? Uh, yes, sir. What kind of shirt is it? It's like a, you know, short sleeve button down shirt. Is it a Columbia shirt? No, it doesn't look like a Columbia shirt. What color is it? It's blue. Okay. Um, did your dad have a foam green Columbia s s sports shirt? Um, may maybe. Okay. Is this it? No. This is blue. Right. Did um Do you you know if your dad ever ordered any Vinny Vine or I don't know. Did he order did he order clothes um after your mother and brother's uh, murders? maybe he ordered clothes, but he he doesn't wear a lot of vineyard vines. Okay. Have you ever seen him buy a vineyard vine? No, sir. And um, you can take that down, Doug. Um, sometime in August, did did you uh, go with your dad where you, you played in a golf tournament? Yes, sir. I went and played in a golf tournament, and he came and wanted to watch us play in it. And what kind of golf tournament? It's a, it's a golf tournament that a buddy of mine puts on in Somerville every year. It's called the Jasso Invitational. It's just a bunch of guys that are friends come together and play in a golf tournament. And and did you look up the date of that tournament before testifying today? I did. And what date was what weekend was that tournament in August of excuse me, in twenty twenty one? Yeah, it's the last weekend in August of twenty twenty one. Okay. Um do, do you know if you, you were in the, well, was there a house uh, that Johnny Parker had that your dad kept stuff in? Yes, sir. There's a, um, there's a small house in between Johnny Parker's house and my Uncle Randy's house. It's, I, think, I think Mr. Johnny built it for his mom or, or, or mother-in-law or something when she was sick. But yeah, there's a little, little two-bedroom house right there. And did your dad stay there? He um, did. He did. I don't know if we mentioned that as one of the places where there was clothing. Yeah, that'd be one. That'd okay. be another one. All right. So there are a lot of places. Yes, did, sir. Uh, were you th were you there? Um, did you observe your dad talking to Blanca about anything? Uh, were you getting ready to go on the golf trip? No, sir. Okay. You were not present. No, sir. I don't think I was present. Were, did you go in any other golfing outings? Um, in August with your dad, to your knowledge? Um, yes. Uh, earlier in er, earlier August of that year, we played um, played golf down in Hilton Head with the people from the Trial Lawyers Convention. Okay. Now you've um, have you been sitting in this courtroom since? Day one? Yes, sir. Once every the trial day. started? Every day. And um, you were, were you here when um, a video was played of an interview with your dad on June 10th? Yes, sir. Um, and there was a question was about whether your dad said, I did him so bad or they did him so bad. Do you remember yeah. that? Yes, sir. Um, do you recognize your dad's voice? I do. If you listen to it, would you be able to tell the jury whether it's I or they? Yes, sir. Uh, 
Your Honor, I'd like to pull up Exhibit 153, the clip. And sit so bad. So bad. What'd your dad say? Said they did them so bad. They did them so bad. Was that the first time you'd heard him say they did him so bad? No, sir. When was the first time you heard him say they did him so bad? Uh, first time I heard him say that was the night that I went down to Moselle, the night of June the 7th. Did he say that more than one time? He did. One second, Your Honor. Let me check to see what I left out. Just very briefly, um, Buster, you've heard testimony during this trial that, that your dad was stealing money from clients. Did yes, you know sir. anything about that? No, sir. Okay. And um, just lastly, uh, roughly how long would it take to clean a, a dog run down at the kennels? Two dog runs, for example. Um, roughly, I'd say 10 minutes or so. Okay. And what do you have to do? You got to get the hose, turn the hose on, spray out, spray out the dog kennels. You got to, you know, put the bed on top of the wooden box so the bed's not wet. Um, now, you're, what are you spraying? Dog manure? Yeah, spraying, you know, dog poop. And it spreads out. And you've got to. That's right. Yeah, you got to spray it. Make sure it's all out of there. Spray it to the back. Oh. All right. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. We'll take a break now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for about 15 minutes. Please go to the jury room. Please do not discuss the case. All right. Thank you. Cross-examination. Yes, sir. I'm John. <coughs> and I want to first off tell you I am sorry about your mother. Sorry, I can't hear him. Uh, I'm sorry back. about his mother. Well, if you step back a little bit, I can hear you. And I'm sorry about your brother. Thank you. And I'm sorry about your grandfather. Thank you. He was nice to me when I was a young assistant solicitor. I'm sorry for your loss. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't have any questions for you, Buster. Okay. When you are leaving the main house, you told Mr. Griffin that the, the main entrance was the brick entrance? Yes, sir. But there's also a side entrance or by the kennels or yeah. entrance exit. I'm yes, sir. Okay. Just a totally different entrance. And the mailbox was at the side entrance? Yes, sir. The mail, the, the, the kennel entrance. Yes, sir. Okay. Why was that? Do you know? I don't know. I think it's just the. I really don't know. Okay. I don't either. But the packages would come to. You said the kennel side. They would come to the shed. Okay. And a lot of times, y'all would use that kennel entrance exit to go, just like you'd use the main one, right? Yeah, you you, you would. I would say that I I more so tended to use the. The main one, the one that I say is the is the brick pillars. But yeah, I mean, you could certainly leave either way. If you were leaving the main entrance mm -hmm. and you got down, you're leaving the house and you're going toward the brick, and then you know where it's kind of a wire where it kind of cuts off to the kennel too, right? Sure. So you go straight or left. If you were leaving at night going straight, and if you were looking out to the left and the lights were on, you, you'd be able to see the lights on at the kennel just from that little while, wouldn't you? Maybe, depending on what lights were on and whatnot. I mean, if it was fully lit up, maybe. Okay. And I, just from that while, instead of going straight, if you, from that distance, you'd be able to, if the lights were on fully, you'd probably be able to see them. Maybe, yes, sir. Almeida 
where your grandma and granddaddy were. Is that close to the, I think you, it's, it's close to the law firm, isn't it? Almeda? Yes, sir. Close to the law firm? I, I wouldn't say so. I mean, how, how anywhere in Hampton is close to anywhere in Hampton because it's not very big. Fair enough. But, I mean, it's a 10-minute, it's a 10, 10 minute, 12-minute drive out to Almeda, I would think, from, from the law firm. I think, Mr. Duck, did you bring up 131? Can I ask him to do that? Sure. I know Mr. Harkin being exposed, but this is Mr. Griffin's witness. I said, sure. So you don't have to get, but you see, is this kind of where you said everybody would park? It's right. <clears throat> so if you look. Do you mind if I come up here? No, sir, you can. So if you look right off this well, point. You might want to come down here if you don't mind. This is the jury. There's a rope around the there. So if you look right over here, this is kind of the, what I <coughs> refer to as like the back corner of the house. And it would basically, you would come around, there's a big oak tree here, you come around it, and then you basically pull up, and you would probably stop the hood of your car right in, you know, right off um, the back corner of the house. So it'd be closer to here than over here? Be about right in here. So right in here? Yeah, I mean, because you don't want to pull up super close to it. Yeah, be right out. Okay. But right there was a driveway here. all in, paved driveway in here, right? There is a paved driveway over towards the side of the house. Okay, and, and really not many tire tracks. The, the grass looks good in here. I don't know when these pictures were taken, but it's a little dead right there. But there is a driveway, right? There is a driveway. Okay, you can have a seat back. Thank you, please. When, when did you when did you first mention that to anybody about parking in the in the in the yard there? What do you mean? I mean, like, when did you first discuss that with anybody as far as where the car is parked at um, your grandma and granddad's house. When was the first time you talked to anybody about that? A um, couple days, a couple days ago. A couple days ago? Okay. That's the first time you mentioned that? Sure. Okay. And then that would have been um, after Shelley testified, right? Shelly Smith? I guess. I don't really remember when Miss Smith tested that. Miss Smith. Did you bring that to somebody's attention or did somebody ask you about it? I couldn't. I'm not sure. And I think you um, keep forgetting I'm on cross. <laughs> um, you testified that um, how many times had you been there with your dad? I wasn't quite clear with your answers to Mr. Griffin. I'm not trying to be difficult, Buster. I understand, and I can't give you an approximate number, but I mean I've been out there with him several times. Okay. And um, would you always call? You said you call. Did you always call when you got there? Yeah, I feel like most of the time you would call just to tell you know because. The ladies get nervous, you know, if you if you aren't if you hadn't called and they see a car pulling in the driveway, you know, it's just easier to call and let them know, like, hey, we're going to be pulling around, you know, please unlock the door. Or we'd like to come in. Had you ever been over there at six thirty in the morning? Have I ever been out there at six thirty in the morning? Any? I mean, just like overall, my. I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean I've, I've been out there at 6.30 in the morning before going, going hunting and whatnot. And you call then also then, right? Well, if that was... Going into the house. The, mm, I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, just let them know, especially 6.30 in the morning. Sure. Okay. Your mom loved Edisto, didn't she? Yes, sir, she did. I love Edisto. She was actually getting some work done down there, wasn't she? Yes, sir. She was getting some work done on the house. 
And um, on this date, June 7th, um, literally there were people inside doing work that day, weren't they? I think so. Yeah. And her plan was to stay down there that night, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know what her plan was. You had, um, I think the last time you'd been to Moselle, you said was the spring maybe a few months prior to this? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have to say yes for the court reporter, not for me. Just yes. Just for Sorry. And you talked to your mom that day on June 7th? Yes, sir. And I think you had talked to Paul the last time on the 5th, if I'm not mistaken, June 5th. That's what you told him on the interview. Sure. And Mr. Griffiths, to ask you about the financial troubles and that have come out here, you had no knowledge of your finance, your dad's financial difficulties at all, did you? No, sir. I mean, you really didn't. No, sir, I really didn't. And um, as far as you knew, financially, the family was sound. Yes, sir. Okay. You went to Wofford. I did go to Wofford. Go Terriers, for the record. Thank you. Um, but, but everything, as far as you knew, financially was okay. And um, when did you learn it what? Uh, <clears throat> I guess on September the, whatever that day in September was. So back in the, um, the birthday, I guess for your dad, Memorial Day, down at Edisto. Sure. Um, defense exhibit, and I apologize, I don't know what number it was just played. I believe a Mr. Chris Wilson is hugging your dad. Yes, sir. Okay. He's a family friend. Yes, sir. Okay. You didn't know then that he owed your dad owed Chris Wilson or stole 192,000 from him, did you? I did not. And I'm not saying that'd be mean, but you really didn't know that. That's that's correct. Okay. Didn't know. And this boating, the boating accident that um, Mr. Griffin asked you about, that was pressure on the family, wasn't it? I don't know that pressure is the right word. I mean, it's, it's definitely an, an, an uneasy feeling. You know, your, your brother is criminally charged, and then you, myself, and my father have civil charges. I mean, definitely unsettling. I mean, it called stress within the family, didn't it? It, it it was it was stressful. I wouldn't say sh within the family because I mean, you know, we supported each other. And sure. And I'm not I'm not questioning that, but I mean, your mom felt ostracized. Yes, sir. She even more so wanted to stay at Edisto. Yes, sir. It really. I mean, you were a little frustrated with Paul yourself, weren't you? In Just terms of? As far of as using your ID and getting all that. And I'm, that case is over, okay? Sure. But I mean, you didn't like it when you used your ID yourself. Um, and I'm not trying to go anywhere, Buster, but he'd use your ID sometime and you didn't want him to. Mr. Uh, how many questions you're going to ask? I'm questions, sorry. comments, what's the question? What's the question? Did you like it? Yes, sir. Did he, he used your ID, didn't he? I'm sorry, can you say it again? <laughs> Did Paul use your identification? Yes. Did that frustrate you? Sometimes. Okay. You were shown the tree video with the shirt and the pants. You remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. When you saw your dad on the night of June 7th, what did he have on? When I had made my way up to the house, he was wearing um, shorts and a, and a T-shirt. And uh, who took, who laundry his clothes? Um, at, at that period of time, uh, would have been Blanca. And then my mom also does laundry sometimes. Too. But on a day-to-day, -day, did Blanca take care of your dad's clothes, laundry 
clean and folding. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Griffin asked you about. Um, you never went back to Mazelle after this incident. Well, I mean, after or did you? I'm if you take June seventh on June, I mean, I've gone, I've been back to Moselle since then, but I've never slept on another night at Moselle. Okay. And did your dad? Let's strike that. Big portion, though. Beg court's indulgence. Did your dad try to get you to go hunting out there again one time or suggest it? Um, he, he asked if I wanted to and, and if I wanted to that I could. But you didn't want to? No, sir. Did, didn't want to go. That's all I have. Thank you, Buster. Yes, sir. Thank you. Redirect. Very briefly, John. Buster, if your mother, when she, when she went to Edisto and stayed for multiple nights, would she take Bubba with her? Yeah, usually. She'd take a combination of, of Bubba and maybe another dog, Grady. Okay. She, she would take dogs with her, yes. Right. And you understand Bubba and Grady were at Moselle the night of June 7th. Right? I do, yes, right. sir. That's all I have, you. Anything further? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let me step down. <laughs>